What are the key concerns of the Dolphins' ongoing negotiations with quarterback Tua Tagovailoa? Is that the team is bidding against themselves for his services? We're looking across the league and the quarterback situations that may be in competition with Miami next offseason here today on Locked On Dolphins. You are Locked On Dolphins, your daily Miami Dolphins podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Miami, welcome to another episode of Locked On Dolphins. It is your team every day here on the Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Krabs, a lifelong Miami Dolphins fan, host of Locked On Dolphins, co-host of Locked On NFL Scouting. You can find our shows on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Tip the cap to our every dares because it is your team every day. We don't just say it, we live it here on the Locked On Network. Today's episode of Locked On Dolphins is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 to bet on spreads, player props, money lines, you name it, with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. Today on the show, we're starting the week off in a fun way uh, because we're looking at the league. Uh, and the question that we're looking to explore is, who are you bidding against uh, right now in these quarterback conversation, contract negotiations with Tua Tungvaloa? Because I, I think the the skeptics of Tua Tungvaloa would say, you're really bidding against yourself. If you let him test the market, what you're ultimately going to end up finding is uh, if you give him a top of market deal, you're overpaying for his services. That's the perception from those who would be skeptical of giving a quarterback contract extension out. And we're going to be a little bit heavier on Tua Tungvaloa contract content uh, than what we have been. Uh, I've tried to just kind of let the process play out, right? But now that we've had another quarterback contract extension drop with Trevor Lawrence getting a a $55 million per year contract. At the end of the day, uh, you've kind of reached the same point you did now that you did with Jalen Waddell, where you, you waited it out, you were patient, uh, you, you were pretty methodical about making sure that you weren't uh, overcommitting dollars, but you've let other teams get contracts done between Jared Goff and Trevor Lawrence now. And you are at the point now where you've probably cost yourself a little bit of money as a result. And if you wait longer, and if you let Jordan Love get done in Green Bay, you're probably going to cost yourself more. Because every contract that happens now, now that Trevor Lawrence has gotten 55, and the percentage of cap is lower, and you understand that, but it's still 55. And the longer you wait now, to his camp will be able to say, well, he's accomplished more than Trevor Lawrence has in his, his career. As far as the production, the productivity, Trevor Lawrence won a playoff game, but he threw four picks in that game, and, and the Chargers really gave the game away. Um, to has a better winning percentage. He's had better production. He should be at that level and stratosphere of, of compensation. And then if Jordan Love comes out and Jordan Love gets 56 and resets the quarterback market, uh, from a, an annual average perspective, maybe not a percent of cap perspective, but an annual average perspective to his camp can say, well, you know, uh, he had a really outstanding eight games last season, but he's a one year starter uh, to has got more years of high end production. He's played more games. He's more of a definitive asset than what Jordan Love is just because Jordan Love, there is kind of the variance of a small sample size. He should be compensated more than that. And I, I think the Trevor Lawrence one was the one that came through where you're like, all right, you've probably cost yourself a little bit of money now. And Miami did that with Jalen Waddle. They end up getting a contract extension done. It looks like a favorable contract. So it's not like the, the ship has sailed for Miami to get something productive done that's beneficial for both sides. But the time is now, right? If you, if you wait now and you sit on your hands, you're going to cost yourself more money. So the point being, um, I wanted to look across the league at this notion that Miami is right now exclusively bidding them this against themselves for Tua Tungvaloa. And anybody from this point on uh, who thinks otherwise uh, is you're, you're 
I, I guess just a two or homer. I've been accused of being a two or homer. I've been accused of being a two or hater. I'd like to think that means I'm objective down the middle and people on both sides of that camp don't like what, what is said at times, but let's, let's think about the perception of the market for Tua, right? And, and the perception of the market for the 2025 off season, if you let him play out this year's contract and you say, you know what, like we really want you back, but we don't want to overpay for you. So why don't you go figure out that you've earned the right to be a free agent? Like we said with Christian Wilkins, right? A couple things to keep in mind. Who are the other expiring contracts at the quarterback position? Who else might be out there in free agency? I have that list up. Dak Prescott, kind of the hallmark name. Uh, going through a contract standoff with the Dallas Cowboys. Sounds like there's some interest in getting that done. Dak would probably get 60. Uh, it's kind of the, the number that's been thrown around on more than one occasion for Dak Prescott is, is $60 million. Uh, Jordan Love is an expiring contract. It's been reported that the Packers are interested in getting a contract extension with him before training camp. Uh, Cowboys is a little less shaky. Tua, 37-year-old. Russell Wilson, Mac Jones, Jimmy Garoppolo, 34-year-old Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, these are the hallmark players at the quarterback position. Now, you could live in a world where Dallas doesn't get something done with Dak Prescott. They can't franchise tag him because they franchise tagged him twice already. That was written into his new contract. So if Dak doesn't get a new contract done with Dallas, he will hit the market. In which case, I think it would help you that Tua would not be the uh, universally preferred top quarterback on the market. Um, Jordan Love expects something to get done there. There is a realm of possibility. If they don't get something done, they let him play it out the season. I would expect they do get something done. Uh, but you acknowledge the possibility of the top three quarterbacks that are going to be available uh, in some way, shape, or form would include Tua. Uh, it could theoretically include Jordan Love, and it could theoretically include Dak Prescott. Spare me the Russell Wilson, Justin Fields, Mac Jones stratosphere of players. Russell at this stage it was catastrophically bad in Denver. Did not run that offense in any way, shape, or form. It's either we're chucking long balls down the field or we're checking the ball down to our running back, and that's it. I understand he's got a resume. Um, the, the, the play's not good. So that's where you're at with uh, potential free agents to be infused into the market. Uh, this year's draft class is a little shaky, I'm going to be honest. I, I think the consensus top name that you would get is Carson Beck from Georgia. Um, obviously played at a high level, but not perceived to be in the same stratosphere of some of the top quarterbacks from this year's class. Most notably, Caleb Williams. Kind of a different stratosphere of talent. Uh, Shadur Sanders in Colorado, some promise, started the season really well to start, kind of faded down the stretch. Uh, you can miss me with the idea that Quinn Ewers and Jalen Milrow are first-round picks at this point. Uh, neither one of those guys, I think there's a lot more holes uh, in their games, um, regardless of what some of the advanced metrics might say. You have super toolsy guy like Drew Aller from Penn State. Um, some parallels to Will Levis, who also played at Penn State. Hasn't put it all together. He was supposed to be a big leap over Sean Clifford. Sean Clifford was a more productive quarterback at Penn State than what Aller was this past year. Uh, and, and now you're into guys like Cam Ward, who I really like, but he'd have to make a really big leap and put it all together for University of Miami this year. Uh, Riley Leonard transferring from Duke to Notre Dame. It's not the quarterback class that you just got, is kind of my point. So you have potentially three bigger name quarterbacks, including Tua Tungvaloa, and a questionably deep, but not super appealing, at least right now, and this can change because there's a lot of football left to be played, uh, quarterback market. So assume let's, let's assume Jordan Love gets his contract, as it's been reported, before um, training camp. And that would leave potentially Dak Prescott and, and Tua Tungvalu as the top two quarterbacks in free agency with a shaky draft class. That's one piece of this puzzle for like, okay, who, who are you bidding against? Well, it depends on what other options are out there, right? 
now we got to look at the league and determine how many possible landing spots would make sense. And the bigger it is, the higher the surcharge is going to be. We'll have some more thoughts on that in just a minute. So make sure that you stick with us here on Live on Dolphins. Summertime means baseball, the end of the NBA finals, the hopefully sooner rather than later end of the Stanley Cup finals. And you can bet it all on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 that you can use to bet on everything from the finals MVP to who's going to hit a home run on any given night. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and add a big win of your own to your summer bucket list with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. The NFL. We got 32 teams. And the last reminder that I would give you is this. Open market bidding and free agency equals about uh, 20% surcharge on like a player value. Like Robert Hunt, right? If you told me Robert Hunt was worth uh, $15 million per season, and that's about the ballpark. We did that show. I think I settled around $13.5 is what I would have offered. Um, he got 20 per from the Carolina Panthers, right? So this, this is especially applicable to a quarterback. You look at um, Christian Wilkins, right? This time last year, we were all sitting here debating, is Christian Wilkins worth $22.5 million per season or not? Well, he didn't have the sack numbers yet. Um, but you forecasted it forward, and you said, hey, the, the Fangio scheme versus the Boyer-Flores scheme should probably do good things for him. I expect there's going to be a big jump here. Well, lo and behold, he had nine sacks last year. He hits the open market. And we were debating, is he, you know, 22 and a half million or something like that? And I'm not a math guy, but I could take, if you take 22 and a half and you move the decimal place over one spot to the left, that's 2.25. That's 10%. And you multiply that by two to get to 20%. And that's four and a half million dollars. And if you add four and a half to 22 and a half, you get 27. And what did Christian Wilkins get in free agency? 27 plus million per. So that, that surcharge exists, and it's real, right? So as you're, you're perceiving who are the contenders, just know the more contenders that we're able to identify in this process from both the AFC and the NFC, the more likely it is that that 20% surcharge is going to exist. And to a tongue of a low, you know, maybe the... Uh, durability questions create a little bit more apprehension uh, for teams for bidding for his services, but he is 26 years old. He'll be going into his year 27 season in 2025. And is the entering into the prime of your career as a quarterback, you know, quarterbacks uniquely, uh, maybe a little bit less versus like guys who play on the perimeter where the athleticism is more of a premium and, and the more of that that you have in the tank, you're closer to your physical ceiling. Um, th there's kind of this X, Y axis of physical talent and ability along with experience and football acumen at the quarterback position that, that puts you on a curve that it doesn't drop off until a little bit later but the more football acumen that you're able to, to allocate uh, puts you into the prime of your career a little bit later at that position versus, you know, running backs, you, 23, 24 years old. Hey, that's your prime. You got low tread on the tires, a little different court, court conversation for quarterbacks. So I think we've adequately set the table. We're going to go division by division and just ask, Hey, how feasible is it? This team could be in the quarterback market next year. Buffalo got Josh Allen on a long-term contract. No. Uh, the Miami Dolphins, of course, they, they would be one of the teams that would be bidding. That's one for Tua Tagovailoa's services, and, and it's been reported that they want to get a contract extension done. They intend on paying Tua Tagovailoa, right? But if you are to say, "Hey, let's let the process play out. Let's let them test free agency. We don't want to pay too much," they'd be one. The New England Patriots just spent a top three pick on Drake May. He would be one year into that. I cannot imagine a world in which they would live in where things would be so bad with Drake May after one year that they'd say, let's give a top of quarterback contract out on the market to a free agent and move on from Drake May. 
It's also worth acknowledging that you are a little bit more skeptical because of the physical strengths and weaknesses of two as a player, uh, the cold weather outdoor teams. Um, there's more questions there. That's a fair thing to say about his resume at this stage is playing in cold weather environments and throwing the football. And it was accentuated with how bad it was in Kansas City. You don't play a lot of games in that cold of weather. So I understand that. But I do think teams that play indoors and the teams that play further south or in the southwest uh, probably are a more attractive fit just because of his style of play mixed with his strengths and weaknesses as a player mixed with the climate in which you're going to provide him to play the majority of his football games. Right. Like, I, I think that's it's fair. The New York Jets. What happens if Aaron Rodgers retires? You know, we're, we're on a mystery vacation during mini camp and we're going to miss the whole thing. If Rodgers were to retire, that's a team that I could see saying, well, we've had a lot of struggles playing him head to head. He's beaten us as of this recording. Every time he's played us, he's beat us. They would have the dollars uh, and they are a team that loves to chase a splash. I wouldn't completely dismiss them as being a team that's in the running. Um, do I think it's likely Aaron Rodgers retires? I have no idea. Can I put him down for half a team? So Miami and the Jets would be like one and a half teams that are would be bidding in, and in the market for the services. You go to the South, you have the Baltimore Ravens. They just paid Lamar Jackson. No, you have the Cincinnati Bengals. They just paid Joe Burrow. No. The Cleveland Browns. Uh, do I think Tua Tungvalu right now is a better quarterback than Deshaun Watson? Yes, I do. But Deshaun Watson got a 100% fully guaranteed contract that has several years left on that contract. That is uh, very difficult for me to envision in a world in which the Browns would not only get out of the Watson contract, but then turn around and pay another quarterback a significant amount in free agency to uh, take over his services. Watson would have uh, $92 million in, in guaranteed salary left after this year. So you're not going to get pay, pay to a, uh, uh, what Jared Goff got a $70 million signing bonuses collected like $80 million in cash. You're not going to pay him $80 million in cash and then pay out $92 million to Deshaun Watson the same year. That's just not going to happen. Right. So I'd say no to the Cleveland Browns because of the contract situation with Deshaun Watson, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're wide open. They got Fields and Russell Wilson in contract years. I would say, based on who they have pursued, well, they've looked for guys that can run, can throw on the move between Kenny Pickett, right? It was a guy who could throw on the move, didn't necessarily have the biggest arm, but was very athletic to get outside the pocket. Justin Fields is certainly that to the umpteenth degree and has a big time arm. And Russell Wilson's best abilities is his arm strength to push the ball down the field and extend plays within the pocket. He likes to hold on to the ball. A little different style. I would probably say no to Pittsburgh. So I'd say no to the entire AFC North, which still leaves you at one and a half. And like maybe there's a, you give Pittsburgh like a 0.25 out of one as far as potentially being a fit just because they need a quarterback. So maybe that averages out with the unlikelihood of, of Aaron Rodgers and a transition there for the Jets. So I'm going to keep it at one and a half. Right, that's the point. Houston, C.J. Stroud uh, on a rookie contract played outstanding last year. They're not going to be in the market. Uh, the Colts with Anthony Richardson effectively redshirted his entire year last year, so they're going to be working with a small sample size. Um, but they just invested a top five pick in him. So I can't imagine a world in which the Colts are moving on from Anthony Richardson after what will be his first full year as a starter. Jacksonville just paid Trevor Lawrence. They're not going to be in the market. If things don't go well for Tennessee, I do think even now, you look at Will Levis and his strengths as a player versus uh, the Brian Callahan, Cincinnati Bengals offense that they're looking to transplant in. I think those are a little different. I, I think there's a stylistic clash between what we think Will Levis is and what Tennessee's trying to run with a new coaching staff. And they play in Nashville. 
Um, there's a low investment in Will Levis that will have two years of starting sample size with a guy who's not on a first year rookie quarterback contract. They draft him in the second round. So there's a little bit less attachment. This coaching staff didn't bring him in in the first place. I would absolutely put Tennessee on the list if things don't go well for the Titans this year. And they spent a lot of money for agency this past year. Like they're ready to spend and try to kickstart being a competitive team. So I think that gives you two and a half teams. Uh, and then you get to the AFC West. Denver just drafted Bo Nix with a top 15 pick. Probably pretty unlikely that there's going to be an interest there. Uh, the Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes, no, they're paying him already. The Chargers with Justin Herbert, they're paying him already, no. Uh, the Raiders, I think, are absolutely another team. And they just showed you what they were willing to do as far as like spending on the open market with what they paid. Christian Wilkinson, last year, they gave Jimmy Garoppolo $25 million a season across three years last year after Jimmy had already kind of the wheels fell off the bus. I think the Raiders would absolutely be in the market. Right now, it's um, what they're, they're working with uh, Aiden O'Connell, right? And... Is it Gardner Minshew's the other other quarterback there for them? Yeah, Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell right now. So I think you have the Raiders. I think you have the Titans. You certainly have the Dolphins. And between whether it's the Steelers or the Jets, you give you half a team there. It's about three and a half teams, I think, at the AFC that you can definitively look at and say, hey, if you let this process play out, you don't sign Tua to a contract extension. And then you let them test the open market next year. I think you've realistically got three and a half teams in the AFC. And that's before you get to the NFC, which is what we're going to look at next. You're on Locked on Dolphins. So make sure that you stick with us. Let's live in a world in which Dallas doesn't, because I think that's more of a chaos merchant type environment. If if they re-sign Dak, then the answer is no, because they'll just have reinvested in Dak. If they don't re-sign Dak, then Dak's also going to be on the market, so you can subtract one off of the teams that's going to be bidding for Tua because he'd be going somewhere else anyway. So I think it's, it's kind of a push. So I'd say no, uh, but Dallas could theoretically, like maybe the Raiders sign Dak Prescott, right? But then that opens up Dallas as a spot. Dallas plays at Jerry World. They play in the South. Uh, they've got C.D. Lamb, the explosive offensive weapon. Uh, Dallas is already accustomed to paying a big money contract at quarterback. Whether it's Dacker or not, I could see them spending on a quarterback. Right. So the, the, they'll we'll say no because we'll assume they spend on Dak. I think that's probably the easier math to do. The New York Giants. These are all alphabetical. I'm not no. no Eagles fans that might happenstance be listening. Why don't you mention Philly in the top two? This is out there. New York Giants are an interesting one. They obviously have Daniel Jones, who they did not touch that contract this offseason with the intent of presumably getting out of that contract as soon as possible with as little salary cap ramifications as possible. That means you got to ride this year out, and then you can bump Daniel Jones off the roster this upcoming offseason. What happens if Drew Locke wins the starting job? Well, let's say let's say he doesn't, right? I, I believe Drew Locke's also an expiring contract at the quarterback position, 2025 quarterback. Drew Locke is an expiring contract. So you have Drew Locke and Daniel Jones potentially on the outs there in New York. Well, let's say they win enough games to keep Brian Dable. Somebody remind me. Who was one of two of his offensive coordinators in college? Oh, right, it's Brian Dable. And it's the same thing as the Jets, where maybe ideally the cold weather situation might be a tiebreaker against you, but there's a familiarity with Brian Dable. I wouldn't dismiss that. I think they're a team that's absolutely going to be in the quarterback market one way or another. The question is, I, I think it boosts their chances of New York being a feasible fit if Dayball is still there. So that gives you, what, four and a half? Four and a half teams. Philadelphia, they're paying Jalen Hurts now. Commanders just drafted Jaden Daniels with the second overall pick. No. Chicago just drafted, drafted Caleb Williams first overall. No. Detroit's paying 
Uh, Jared Goff, no. Green Bay, we're presuming that they they pay um, Jordan Love, so that will be a no. And then Minnesota just drafted J.J. McCarthy with a top 12 pick, so we'll assume the answer there is no. So the North divisions are not particularly favorable uh, as far as finding potential land spots, but you do have Miami. You do have uh, the Tennessee Titans. You do have the Las Vegas Raiders. I think you have the New York Giants. And then you maybe have the Jets. So that's six divisions, and you got four and a half teams. Four and a half. But Pinky's down. The Atlanta Falcons, uh, they've not got not one but two quarterbacks with Michael Penix, the top 10 pick, and paying Kirk Cousins. So they're a no. Uh, Carolina, I think logic would probably dictate no. Um, because there, there is the uh, two years of Bryce Young. Uh, we, we probably would probably be the smart thing to do to see that through. They don't have a ton of cap space for 2025. Uh, they do have some flexibility as far as things that they can do with J.C. Horn and his contract and restructuring Robert Hunt and restructuring Derek Brown and restructuring or extending Taylor Moton. Uh, the first few years of a big money quarterback contract, you're, you're probably looking at um, a 12 to $16 million cap hit anyway. So I would never underestimate the craziness of an owner like Dave Tepper, uh, who is all about the splash. He is very much what when, when Stephen Ross first purchased the Dolphins and they spent the first five, six years kind of perpetually chasing their tail in the pursuit of splash and trying to contend and make, make, make a lot of noise. Um, if things don't go well for Bryce Young this year, I think you could say, well, here's the proven version and the proof of concept of what we wanted Bryce Young to be in Tua. I could see, you know, I'll give them the other half, which I think gives you five teams, just because there's an unpredictability nature with Dave Tepper that I do not want to be dismissive of. <laughs> um, and then that in the South, next brings you to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'll, I'm going to go out of order here in the South uh, because Tampa just paid Baker Mayfield. So they kind of have their guy. They paid him a three-year, one hundred million dollar contract. They're they're probably not um, particularly in the market. Uh, Derek Carr. They could part ways with Derek Carr next off season, and they could save thirty million dollars in cap space. Now, the challenge for the Saints is the amount of gymnastics that is required in order to clear up the cap space because they're projected to be about six, 70, $65 million in the red to start the off season next year. Uh, and there's a lot of reworking of contracts because they have just perpetually uh, kicked the can down the road. Like all the perception of all oh, there's the dolphins are so far in with their salary cap management. Nah, this is the team that's actually doing that. Right. Um, but Derek Carr signed a contract, a four-year, $150 million contract. They've restructured that contract twice. He has a roster bonus due next year. So there is a potential out for the Saints. And that's a team who plays indoors, can play in the South. Um, they went after Derek Carr. And it had it's it's not going it did not go well last year, but if they ride it out for two years and then you know do the thing the Saints have always done, which is facilitate a bunch of salary cap space, you saw Drew Brees as a quarterback who has you know the people want to make the Drew Brees to a tongue of a low comparison. Um, Drew had a lot of success in an indoor building in New Orleans. Um, do I think it's likely that they move on from Derek Carr and then pay Tua? Probably not. Can I can I get another half a point, which would give you five and a half teams that are are kind of in the bidding? And then that takes you to the NFC West. You have Seattle, Brock Purdy on a rookie contract. 
well-entrenched starter there? No. Uh, Kyler Murray, they're paying him. I don't think that's particularly likely. Uh, but then you have two teams that are kind of mystery teams. I, I don't think Seattle's a great climate fit for Tua. Um, they do have the weaponry with wide receivers, but that's a notoriously cold, wet environment. And I think if you can avoid that, it's probably preferable. I can see Seattle kind of uh, either working things out with Geno Smith long for a, another longer term window, or maybe they go out and get guy like Cam Warren in the draft who played his college ball initially after moving up to division one at Washington state. Right. So it can kind of put you back in his old stomping grounds. Uh, but then you have the Rams and Matt Stafford. It's, it's kind of been, it's kind of been alluded to that, that there'd been some consideration for retirement for some injuries. There seems to be some level of, of displeasure in regards to his contract situation uh, that maybe there's an adjustment on this year, but Stafford in general um, just have a hard time kind of ignoring that this is an older player. He, he's going to be 37 years old in 2025. The retirement words been thrown out already. They've got a couple years left on that contract, but there's probably some readjustment as far as uh, the cash that he's owed uh, from a cash breakdown this year. He's set to collect $31 million in cash. Uh, so maybe they move some of the money up and kind of fix that short term. He got $27.5 million last year. So like I get where Stafford's coming from, seeing what these guys are getting paid. And Stafford's still, when he's healthy, one of the, the best in the game. Does he retire? I mean, they, they've kind of taken some swings. Uh, the Rams brought in Jimmy Garoppolo to be the backup quarterback this year. They drafted Stetson Bennett in the mid-round last year, and he was not a big-time like tools guy in the first place. Uh, you think Tua is undersized and doesn't have good arm strength. I, I, let me show you some Stetson Bennett tape. I think there's enough there where like McVay's off the same coaching tree. There's a lot of similar terminology. McVay got a lot of run with Jared Goff. And yeah, he had the breakthrough with Matt Stafford, but there's only so many guys to go around. Like if two was on the market and they were committed to, or if Stafford forced their hand by retiring, I could see them also being a team that's in the mix. So I think you have like definitively four teams and then you have like another four teams that are kind of maybes. So if you, you take the middle, you call it six teams, it's almost a quarter of the league. And that's for me, like, He's not going to be as valuable to anybody as he is to the Dolphins because the Dolphins have the proof of concept, right? And obviously the picture will change if they do pay two of the big money and what that means for the rest of the roster for the next two years is probably very little. But beyond that, you know, you get into the new years of the contract and there's going to be some attrition with the roster and guys that have to go from salary cap purposes, be that Tyreek Hill or, or anybody else, uh, on top of the already evolving shape of the Dolphins roster in general, which had its fair share of turnover this year. Um, and th there's the challenges that are involved there. I intend on speaking with somebody this week, uh, having somebody on the show as a guest who can give some great insight here. Uh, it's a former NFL quarterback. He's a pro football hall of famer um, scheduled to speak with him midweek and have that show hopefully run by the end of the week, which I'm very excited for, but I, I'm, I'm really in, interested in asking him about his experience with that. Um, as far as kind of a supporting cast around you and then your individual maturation and how those things kind of have an inverse relationship as you get older Um it should be a great conversation that I'm, I'm really looking forward to. I don't want to say too much because, you know, I've been in this, this business long enough where schedule conflicts happen or, or last minute changes or unexpected issues and it doesn't happen. So uh, I'll really bill it once, once the interview happens and, and we know we're going to run the show, uh, but you can keep your eyes on, on that. That's something to look forward to here on locked on dolphins. That's going to do it for us now. Um, I, I think the perception that there's nobody else out there that would be bidding on Tua Tonga Valoa is, is falsified. Um, you have enough teams that are hungry enough 
for quarterback solutions that if Tua played this year, you let him play out the contract and plays another 17 games, he passed for another 4,500 yards and almost 30 touchdowns. There's there's teams that dream of that production, regardless of what kinds of physical limitations or styles of play that you have to adopt, regardless of what that has to come with. There's teams that would kill for that, right? So. Again, I think you are at rubber meets the road time as it pertains to the contract negotiations with two. I think you're in a very similar situation to what you were with the uh, Jalen Waddle contract. The difference is you're talking about a lot more money because it's quarterback. Ball's in your court. What are you going to do? We'll be back again tomorrow with more content coming your way here on Locked on Dolphins. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed today's conversation. Make it a great rest of your day. I'm out of here. Fins up.